Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be trying out my new flash diffuser and you can make it yourself at home. So a few weeks ago I was killing some time on Facebook and I wanted onto the homemade flash diffusers from Macro Photography Group and I found this where James Chisnell had shared a blueprint for a flash diffuser to make at home. Now it looked quite similar to a lot of the ones you can buy online but some of them are quite pricey and to add to it because they're not made in the UK there's a big postage cost as well so um, they are cust and they're custom made so you know they're worth the money but I thought I might have a go at making my own. A few days ago I put them together when I say I put them together I got my wife to help me because she's the crafty one in the family um, and we made this and it's quite big so I put it on my Olympus OM1 with a 90mm macro and I've got a Godox TT685 flash um, and I've got some IKEA batteries which I find really good but I thought it'd be worth me just running through why I've ended up using this flash diffuser and some of the other options available if you want to diffuse flash from macro photography mostly for insects and invertebrates so my first attempts of using flash with macro involved an off-camera flash this is a METS flash and I had Pentax at the time, but I've put my uh, Panasonic in here as a proxy because I've sold all my Pentax gear. And I had it on an off-camera flash, a TTL cable. You can get them for like 20 quid on eBay. Um, and also, I modified one of these Lambent C diffusers. You can buy them on eBay and Amazon and various other websites and shops. But I modified it. So this has got foil on the outside. I've then put tape over the top to hold that foil there. And at the front here, I'm afraid it's in a bit of a state, the Lambency diffuser, and I've put some, I think it's actually just kitchen towel. You can put various diffusers, packing foam, various different things work as well, depending on your preference. And I've got some okay shots, but it was always a bit awkward to have the camera in one hand and the flash in the other hand. It was quite easy to move it around and you know get the angle flash you wanted, but you can't keep the camera steady with one hand. So, I looked around and eventually I found this, it's a Manfrotto arm, and in the end, once you set it up, you ended up with something like this. So, it's a bit big, bulky and clumsy to move around, but it did mean I can get a solid grip here, and on the camera, um, I could adjust using this uh, locking arm exactly where I want the flash, um, and it gave me a nice diffused light, and as you can see, I got some nice shots of it, but you can see there's some hot spots where the flash has reflected too much on the damselfly's eyes here and on the wing cases here on this cardinal beetle and the wings of this frog hopper. So that's despite them all having a bit of natural light around as well. But when I took this up into places like darker woodlands and with invertebrates that had sort of a shiny carapace like this wood ant, those bright hot spots on the legs and body just don't look very good and this pill millipede is just too shiny for this setup to really handle very well so I started looking for another setup but I didn't really get very far until I switched to Olympus so when I switched to Olympus I bought this the STFA macro flash designed for macro so should be good but I did find even with the diffusers that come with it that it was still not diffusing enough for the especially the shinier insects so I looked at Matt Cole's website again where I got the previous design from and he had a setup for his Canon Twin Macro Flash. And to make that, he used some of these Lambent C Flash diffusers again, but just the end. So you've got two of those. Um, and he then put some material inside. So I've put some uh, packing foam in there, just sort of anti the diffusion effect. Um, you can put some kitchen towel over the top, but you probably can see bits of it on there. I didn't find it made that much difference personally. And then you've got a Heath Robinson away of getting it in front of the Macro Flashes. So I'll just put that together and I'll show you what I did. So this gives you an idea, roughly, what it was like. Um, as you can probably tell, it's <laughs> been through the wars a bit. It's been repaired so many times. But I've literally drilled in the bottom of both the diffusers down here, attached them to the bottom of the flash by some string. But I've modified the actual flash slightly. If you look closely here, you can see a little ball head type thing. I think they generally use for the screens on the top of video cameras and that just gives me a bit of height so I can actually get the diffuser well, get it over in through the diffuser here a bit of an angle and the key thing I found was to make sure that they were together like this 
otherwise you get a double spotlight which can look a bit weird especially in like the eyes of creatures they would stick together it's a bit worse away as you can see now and I'm sure if someone had a 3d printer or was a bit more crafty than me um, they could have done a much better job but I gave up on uh, trying to repair and refine this last year I like this setup because it's really quite portable as you can see the close-up of this southern migrant hawker came out really nicely lots of detail and not too much in the way of hot spots from the flesh as did this red mason bee there were a couple of problems with it uh, the first one being that it didn't completely diffuse the light when i went to the shiny insects like this robber fly and shiny black ants that's a real common name um, the hot shots got a bit more obvious the images get worse at night time these images took a fair bit of work to rescue the highlights even when i'd underexposed the rest of it and this shows you the final problem when using extension tubes i had to push up to iso 800 and i've lost some of the detail into noise so on to the new flash diffuser it's made out of plastic sheets um, i've got some poppers in because you can actually take it apart so it goes quite flat but i'm not going to do that now because you can see that on the other video i've shared the link to but the key thing i found was this is especially helpful if you've got a Raynox lens. Um, the Raynox close-up lenses come with this to attach them to bigger lenses and that is really crucial to stop this end bit slipping off. I imagine you can probably get hold of some filter holders or something like that that can do the job as well. And it's just slotting over my flash here which is the Godox TT685 and I'm using my new well, I say new, fairly new, Olympus OM1, or should I say OM Systems OM1, and the OM Systems 90mm macro. Will this new diffuser be any good? Let's head out into my garden and see. Now this corner here is a bit of a sun trap, as you can probably tell. And it's got lots of flowers, so I'm going to look to see what I can find down here. This area of dog rows is proven really fruitful. There's at least three or four species of bee here. Although there were a few bees, only this early bumblebee posed for me. But I'm quite happy with how the exposure came out from the flash. It looks nicely diffused. This hoverfly posed on a nearby bush too. Well, I did quite well with the bees there. I've come down to this area of the garden because I've already spotted a couple of shield bugs. The shield bugs turned out to be mating brassica bugs. Very shiny metallic bugs, but the diffuser handled it. I even got a close-up. This nearby vine weaver was playing dead, but the shot came out okay, light-wise, even if the positioning and posing wasn't that great. After I took the weevil shot, it just got too hot for me. All the insects were then super active, all warmed up in the sun, and none of them were posing for shots, so I called it quits for the morning, but I came out again at four o'clock, and I got these shots. Now the insects were still a bit flighty, so I tried some more distant shots from about 10 or 20 centimetres away, and as you can see, the diffuser still worked well. I did get in close on this one hoverfly, but as it happened in the morning, I'd struggle to get it in focus. This is because it's too dark to see if your focus is spot on as required for these close up shots. I did find some ants farming aphids, and my first good shot clearly showed the flash coming from the left hand side after I'd had to tilt the camera that way for the shot. So I brought this piece out. This is a reflector to go underneath the diffuser. And it pops on. On the poppers at the front here. Like so. And this means when the flash fires, it reflects the light up. I think it's fair to say this improved the shots I got afterwards. So is this diffuser any good? Well, I've not got any prize winning shots today, but I think that's probably more due to the lack of opportunities and the subjects being a bit uncooperative when I did find them in many cases. It's a great piece of kit. I'm really happy with it. The plastic means that when I bash it against some bushes and branches, it's perfectly fine. And you know, it's not gonna fall apart like some of my other diffusers. There are a couple of niggles with it though. The first one being that um, it's quite big. So it's really hard to see your subject. You know, you can see it. And then as you come up to it, you have got no line of sight. And um, the second thing is with it being big and white, that's going to put off some insects and some of them did fly away before I got anywhere near them. And one of the first rules of uh, field craft with insects is to avoid getting your shadow on them, which often spooks them. Unfortunately, this is quite a big area and the very nature of the flash diffuser means that you will probably cast a shadow over your subject. So you have to hope that it cooperates with you. 
And sticking with the problem with the shadows, as I mentioned earlier, it makes it really hard to focus, especially when you're close in, um, and even the focus peaking struggles to work, which makes it really hard to get a pinpoint accurate focus. There is a possible way around the lighting problem. I can get a small LED light and put it inside a diffuser. It's been used uh, by other people in their diffusers, including the uh, designer of this one. He's done it in some of his diffusers as well. So uh, I think I'm gonna try that out in the future. But those issues aside, I have to say this diffuser has been great. The light from the flash has been nicely diffused. No hotspots that I can see really. Nothing that I can't recover with highlights and shadows in Lightroom. It's just what I want with, with my photos. Definitely better than the other two that I showed you earlier. I can't really think of any situations where they'd be better, except maybe with some of the more flighty subjects, but even those would get scared off by that, those setups too. So yeah, really impressed. And like I said, it stood up to being bashed through some bushes. And I think it's well worth making your own if you fancy it. Links are in the description, so uh, go check that out. And a big thanks to James for sending the designs for people like me to make. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you, sir. So if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like it. And please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you like wildlife, if you like wildlife photography, if you like wildlife filmmaking, it should be a good channel for you. Um, and I will be doing some more videos with this diffuser. There's one coming up involving some rare spiders in a nature reserve, all being well. Do please subscribe if you fancy seeing any of that. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.